second ask. So today on your warm up, we're going to do two questions, kind of reviewing our systems of inequalities that we talked about yesterday. For the first problem, we're going to graph this system here, x plus y is greater than 2 and 2x minus y is greater than 1. And you're going to be submitting uh, some of your answers to my questions uh, through the video online today. Okay, and I can, of course, go back and check that and make sure that you're keeping up with me. So, um, use your calculator as we go through this. I'm going to be graphing it here on the board, but I want you to graph it, uh, follow along with me on your calculator. All right? So, first thing we notice is that neither one of these inequalities are solved for y, and they need to be. So, let's take the first one. Um, and to get y by itself, I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So, when I rewrite this, it would say y is greater than negative x plus 2. Okay? Now, some of you probably wrote... Uh, 2 minus x, because that's the same thing as negative x plus 2. As long as the x keeps the minus or the negative and the 2 is the positive, the order there doesn't matter, okay? I just like the x first, and you can see it as we begin our next unit, unit 3, and we start really talking about slope and rate of change. There's a reason why I really uh, prefer the x to be in front of the constant. Um, so just kind of preview and you get in the habit of writing it in that format. So y is greater than negative x plus 2. So what we need to do in order to graph um, that inequality, okay, so this one became this one, right? What we need to do is go to our calculator. And when you go to your calculator, of course, you're going to go to your y equals screen and you're going to type in negative x plus 2. Make sure you do a negative and not a minus on that negative because, or you'll get an uh, error message there. Okay, so negative x plus 2, and then I would like for you to uh, go to your table, and um, if I put in the x values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, find me what those corresponding output or y values would be, all right? I believe when we put in negative 2, okay, um, if I put a negative 2 in for x, and then there's a negative this negative out in front of that, and I add 2 to that, I believe that should end up being positive 4, right? All right, same thing. When you put in negative 1, you're going to get out positive 3. When you put in 0, you're going to get out positive 2. Now, when you put in positive 1, watch what happens. I can erase this, All right? So you understand why your calculator is giving you these values. The It was negative x plus 2. Well, if you put a positive 1 in for x, and then put this negative out in front of that, you get, it actually becomes negative 1 plus 2, so the y value is positive 1. Right, and then, of course, when you put in positive 2, um, you're going to get out 0. All right? So now, uh, you can graph that on your calculator. Of course, you don't have to plot the points like I'm going to. Um, you can just hit graph. Lucky you, right? So I'm going to go left 2, up 4. I'm going to go left 1, up 3. I'm going to stay at 0 and go up 2. Right 1, up 1. And right 2 and stay. All right, so there's my so a couple of points, five points on my boundary line. And, of course, your calculator graphs the entire line, which I need to do. But before I do that, um, I need to make sure um, where I'm graphing the right type of line. Now, on your calculator, um, you don't have to get into the specifics of dotted or solid, but of course when you do this on paper, you would need to be very, very specific as to the type of line that you draw. Since we have a greater than sign right here, okay, with no equal to, then I need a dotted line for this inequality. So I'm going to go back down here to my graph, and I am going to draw a dotted line, all right? Now, do you remember on your calculator how to shade? All right, based on the greater than symbol in my uh, inequality here, I'm going to shade above my dotted line. So on your calculator, you can tell it to shade above the line. Remember, uh, you move to the left of your y equals, and you enter, and you'll get a whole menu of the different things you can do to your graph, and you want it to shade above. So if you'll fix that on your calculator, and it should shade this side of your line that you already have graphed, okay? So all the points in the my green shaded area here, these are points, all these points are solutions to the first inequality only, all right? So now what we need to do is we need to take the second inequality right here and do the same thing. So I need to solve it for y, get some points out, and graph it. 
All right? Now, again, you're using your calculator, but we can't use your calculator until we have y isolated by itself. So let's think through that. Just like on the one above, what we're going to do is subtract uh, the x term. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Now, when you do that, you, when you bring down that y, you have to bring that minus down as a negative. So y is negative, greater than, and instead of writing 1 minus 2x, I'm going to write negative 2x plus 1. And we just had a discussion as to why I like the order that way. But this isn't correct because uh, you can't have a negative y. You have to solve for y. So what I'm going to do now is divide by negative 1. All right. Do you remember what happens when you divide by a negative? Yes, y becomes positive, but what happens to this symbol? Correct. That's going to change sign, change direction. So my greater than is going to now become a less than. All right. Now, what's your signs over here? Okay. You're going to divide a negative 2x by a negative 1, which becomes a positive 2x. And then, so you've done this part. Now you're going to divide positive 1 by negative 1, which would become a minus 1 or a negative 1. So the inequality we actually want is this one. Y is less than 2x minus 1. So when you go to your calculator, when you go to your y equals screen, you're going to type in 2x minus 1, and that's going to give us points on the boundary line. So again, let's assume you give me uh, the output values for these five uh, input values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so if we put in negative 2 for x, your calculator should give you what out for y? I believe it should give you negative 5. If you put in negative 1 for x, you're going to get out negative 3. When you put in 0, you're going to get out negative 1. When you put in 1, you're going to get out a positive 1. And when you put in 2, that would be what? 4 minus 1, which is 3. All right, so here are the values um, that on the boundary line for our second inequality. So I'm going to plot those points. So you can now hit graph on your calculator. Let me plot these points, negative 2, negative 5, left and down. Okay. Uh, what was the next one? It was negative 1, negative 3, so left and down. 0, negative 1. Uh, 1, 1, I believe, and 2, 3, so right and up. Okay, now those are points on my boundary line, but now I need to shade, sorry, well, I need to actually, sorry, I need to draw my boundary line, and this is a dotted line because, again, there is no equal to underneath this symbol right here, so dotted, and again, I know your calculator isn't really going to do that for you, but I'm going to do it here on our real picture. There's our line, boundary line. Now, your calculator will shade for you, so let's go back and let's look. Now, remember, um, you don't use the inequality in this original, don't use the symbol in that original inequality there, uh, because when we had to switch the sign, you always go back right here where you have y isolated. Look at that symbol. That symbol tells you where to shade, and it's a less than sign so we are going to shade below this boundary line, all right? So on your calculator, tell it to shade below, and it should look something like this on your calculator. Okay. Now, what we have looks very confusing, so I'm going to outline this uh, to make the overlapped shaded areas much darker. Um, so I'm going to do that. So I would f actually follow this green dotted line here, and then I would follow this red dotted line up here, okay, and everything inside here is the overlapped shaded area, okay, so color that in really nice, all right, so just to make it clear, what you see um, in just the green, those are solutions to just the top inequality. The solutions here in red are just solutions to the bottom inequality, but those in the overlapped area here are solutions to both, which make that be the place where the solutions to this particular system lie. So, um, you should be able to pick out some points that are solutions to this system. Um, for example, 
one point would be one, two, this point here, which is one, two, three, comma, one. Okay? Um, you could pick out lots and lots of other points. So I want you to use the choices I've given you on the video and identify uh, some other correct solutions to this problem. Okay? All right, nice job with that. Uh, let's go to the second problem. And for the second problem today, uh, I'm not actually going to have you graph anything or solve it. I just want us to practice taking a word problem and setting the system up, um, you know, writing the inequalities. So and we're going to focus on this more in class today as well. But this is kind of give us a heads up of what, where we're going with this. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to let x represent small bones and y represent large bones. And based on that for x and y, we're going to set us up a system of inequalities based on the information I give you in the bullets. So here's the scenario. Scooby really likes dog bones. Small dog bones cost $3.50, and large dog bones cost $5. Okay. So my small dog bones are my x's, and my large dog bones are my y's. All right, so it's $3.50 per X and $5 per Y. Okay. Now, he wants to buy at least 20 bones, but he cannot spend more than $80. So let's think about that. So one of my inequalities is just going to deal with the number of bones, not the cost of bones. If this says he wants to buy at least 20 bones, doesn't tell me anything about the cost. So that inequality should say the small bones added to the large bones together, if it's at least, that means it's 20 or higher. So I believe that's greater than or equal. So he's going to buy at least 20 bones, so 20 bones or more. Okay? So that would be our first inequality. Now the second inequality deals with money. All right? So if I'm telling you that he cannot spend more than $80. Cannot spend more than $80. Well, I think that means that he's got to spend less than 80 or equal to 80, but he can't go over 80. All right, but that second inequality is not going to be x plus y is less or equal to 80, okay? Because 80 is a dollar amount, you've got to have these dollar amounts attached to your x's and y's. So think about what that second inequality should be that we're going to write here. Okay. I believe it's going to be 350 per small bone plus $5 per large bone. And that total amount that we spend on all those bones has to be less or equal to $80. Good. Now, once, of course, you have this system, I could then do what we did on the first problem. I could solve each of them for y, graph them, and find all the different combinations of small bones and large bones that will meet both criteria at the same time. Um, maybe one solution is he can buy 50 small and 50 large, right? Well, that's going to give him, if I do 50 small and 50 large, that's obviously going to give him um, a number of bones more than 20. But is it going to keep him under or at or under his $80 limit? I don't know, right? I'd have to try that out. So although there are lots and lots of solutions, there's also lots and lots of wrong solutions. So keep that in mind. But if you graph it, you should be able to come up with some uh, lots of different combinations that will work. Okay? All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, and today we're going to continue our discussion of inequalities and uh, Get prepared for our big notebook check and our test coming up next week. Have a great day.